Hello everyone, I'm John and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'll show you a method how to significantly improve your images captured with a color camera by using monochrome luminance data and level up your astrophotography to APOD quality. This image is currently featured by NASA Sky APOD on their Facebook page as a valid submission for APOD. This means we have here an APOD quality image and for this experiment I will be using my latest astrophotography captured with my new monochrome camera from Tuptec Astro, the 26000 KMA that I've already have a review on my channel. You can check that review also out. And I'll combine it with some older data captured last year with a color camera, about 2 hours and 30 minutes integration time with 7 hours and 30 minutes integration time for the monochrome camera. To be able to apply this method easy, I used two astronomy cameras having the same sensor, the IMX571. One is the Tuptec Astro monochrome camera and the other is the Altair 2060 Hypercam. Having the same sensor size was very easy to combine the data and use the monochrome uh, images as a luminance layer. Now let's see how I will combine this data using PixInsight. We are now in PixInsight and I will uh, start by loading the processing icons. Right click, load process icons. And here we have the two stacks, the mono stack with the Marquenas chain and Virgo galaxy cluster. And here we'll uh, use the screen transfer function and we'll do the same also on the color data. We can see a big difference here, especially these uh, light pollution gradients. On the color image, I didn't use any filters. And because of this, we do have these bad gradients here. And on the monochrome image, I used an uh, Optolong L quad enhanced filter. And you can see is a big difference in uh, gradients comparing the two of them. So first step we'll do is to use gradient correction tool on both images. After this, we'll continue and uh, align the images so they are uh, perfectly aligned to each other. Let's start here with uh, the first one. We'll just go with auto settings and see the results. And you can see here, very, very good. It removed the gradients without having to uh, change any settings. Now let's go to the next one. Let's apply the gradient correction tool. We can see here the correction is not perfect. So we need to adjust the settings here to get a better result. We'll go back and let's increase the height threshold about 24 and protection threshold. Let's try 30. Done. It's a big difference, right? We'll duplicate the color image and go to the next step and align to the color data. Because I have 7 hours and 30 minutes as luminance, I will just align the color data to the mono. So I'll go here at star align, select view and in view, we'll select the mono gradient corrected image, this one, okay, and we'll just apply it here. Now we can close it and use screen transfer function and we have our new image. It uh, rotated it a little bit and now the stars will match with the monochrome image and we'll be able to go to the next step and combine the data together. And we will use channel extraction. We'll use the registered color stack and apply it here directly. And we have red, green and blue. We can close now channel extraction and we'll apply now the screen transfer function auto stretch. Next step will be to go at LRGB combination and here at luminance we'll select the monochrome image okay red green auto here we can select red green and blue and apply global this is the result 
So we've already managed to combine the image. However, I believe we can do a little bit better with the LRGB combination. I would like a little bit more color saturation also for the stars and the galaxies. And to be able to do this, we'll change here the lightness ratio. Let's try 600 and apply global. So you can see, zooming in, we already have some yellow stars here. Having also more saturated image with more color, also the noise from the color image is more visible. Now I've zoomed in in both images and let's check the level of noise. It's very clear that in the normal color stack, we do have more noise here visible. Even if this was captured at minus 15 Celsius and the mono data was captured at minus 10. You can see here in the new image with the monochrome data used as luminance that we have less noise and also the galaxy features look sharper. So we already have a visible improvement by combining the data and we'll be able to get even more uh, once we process it further. And now we will continue with the other nice features here in PixInsight. Blood Exterminator, Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator. So these are paid uh, plugins, you need to buy them. I will start here with uh, Blood Exterminator and just go with uh, Sharper Star 30. So you'll be able to see also difference here in the galaxies and let's apply it. You'll be able to see now how fast it works. Uh, if you want to see how to make PixInsight work much faster, like 10 or 20 times faster, I will uh, make soon a tutorial how to use the NVIDIA GPU to enhance speed in PixInsight. Look, it's almost finished on a 26 megapixels image. Look, let's see the difference before and after. It made also here the galaxies sharper. We can go and continue with the noise exterminator. And let's move it to about 60%. And I will also increase the detail to 30. Usually I leave it to 15%, but here, because our galaxies are and are small, I want to increase also the details more before and after. Here, grade and correction tool, it can correct also even if it's not cropped. It can do it. And in this case, when we want the maximum field of view, I do not want to crop. If I can get a good result without cropping, I will do that and fix these borders in Adobe Photoshop. Next step will be to stretch the image or to use the Star Exterminator. Curve simple, drag here the screen transfer function here. And let's see how is the image in reality without the screen transfer function. It looks like this. So we need to make it brighter and we'll apply now the auto stretch. And here is our stretched image. We'll uh, rename and save. The next step will be also to use the Star Exterminator and let's do it now. Generate Star Image, Unscreen Stars. We will use also Large Overlap. This will take a little bit more time. So we do have here some halos, but this will be easy to correct in post-processing. So this is the Star Image and here we have the Galaxy. So we see it removed a little bit from the Galaxy halos. But we do have a good result here. So looking at uh, the edges, we'll have to fix this in Photoshop. So we finished here in PixInsight. This is our images that we were able to obtain. And now let's process the starless image in Photoshop and we'll recombine with the stars. So we'll go to the next step, final adjustments. We are now in Adobe Photoshop and because I spent much more time processing this image, more than a few hours. I won't show all the processing done here, but I will show you the main steps that I took to get the final result. So first I focus here on the borders and I've used here the rectangular tool. I selected the area and I pressed Shift F5. Then OK, it removed the borders. I've done this on all the parts. However, it removed some of the galaxy on the edges. We can use a mask. I duplicate the layer and you can see it removed the border without removing the galaxies because I, on this mask, I used brush with black and painted back the galaxies that I erased like this. 
So you see, we do not lose any data. After this, I've went camera row filter, and here we can make further adjustments. I've uh, increased here a little bit the exposure. I reduced a little bit the contrast, lower the highlights, so we can see these beautiful details here on the Galaxy score. Then I increase the shadows, increase the whites a little bit, lower the, the blacks, like having stronger blacks to have a better contrast. Add color for the moment I left default, but later I increase the saturation and vibrance. Yeah, I play with these features and also with the temperature, but just a little bit. Stretch a little bit here the tone curve, so we will increase the blacks. And later on, I played a little bit more with the color channels. Details here, I reduced a little bit the noise reduction and color noise reduction. Not much because I've already used noise exterminator to remove most of the noise. After this, I made a lot of curves and levels to get better contrast and adjust the color balance, especially on the sky background. Also, I flattened the image more times and used here the camera row filter multiple times. Played a little bit with the brushes. I made sure I get nice details here in the galaxies, like in the ice galaxies here close to the center. After I placed the stars back and also made a few more adjustments for the sky background that you can see here in the final image. Here we have the final result. This is currently mentioned by NASA Sky APOD on their Facebook page as a valid candidate for APOD. Let's see also some close-up details. Look here, Messier 84, 86. You can see also here the center part of this galaxy, so they are not blown up. We can see also a lot of details here in the ice galaxies. Let's zoom even more. Look how beautiful. We have a lot of elliptical galaxies here and very far away galaxies. You see these small ones very, very far, more than 50 million light years away. So this is a big advantage that you get from using luminance mono data because it will increase also the resolution. You'll uh, get better contrast and sharper details. Also, the signal to noise ratio was much better than just using the color data. This is the way that you can use this method of combining monochrome luminance data with color data to get a much better astrophotography image. You can download it from my uh, YouTube channel. It is available for channel members. So go check the membership, join, and you'll be able to get access to this data from level two and up. If you're interested to see the equipment I use in the video, check the links below. And hope I'll see you also in the next video.